Here we have Ricky Altimore and Tonto, a five-year-old spotted mountain horse gelding. And Ricky, you want to describe some of the problems that you've been having with Tonto? Um, I noticed that uh, when I ride him bareback with just a, uh, a light suede pad or bareback that he gates much better mm -hmm. than in the saddle. Mm -hmm. And um, he has a tendency to trot. He will also canter with his back feet, but, but primarily he breaks the gait and trots a lot. Mm -hmm. When um, when we took the saddle off, mm -hmm. he was sore. All right. And uh, okay. Primarily, that those are the those are the main problems. Okay. You noted. You yeah, I rode I rode with uh, Ricky, and she had a, a very well made um, saddle. It, it was a custom made saddle. She had it for another horse, and they the maker adjusted it for this horse. Um, however, it had a rigid tree. There's only so much adjustment that can take place because the tree is, is the, the frame or skeleton, if you will, of the saddle. And if you can't change the tree, there are only minor modifications you're actually going to make in the saddle. Now, what I noticed when I was riding with Ricky is the Tonto, who is built, and we'll go into that in our confirmation section, Tonto's built for, to do a really nice, decent running walk rack. Uh, he was short striding. He'd come in behind to a certain point of the stride and suddenly just drop his hind leg. That caused him to go a little bit bandy-legged um, because he was not following through on his stride. Well, I suspected a saddle problem, but we didn't say much. And then Ricky asked me to do a confirmation analysis on Tonto for her. And as I was coming down his back, here's what I found. We're going to go down here. Down here, watch his croup. Sinking. He has tremendous amount of soreness in there. That explains why when he went to bring his leg up and follow through on his stride, he couldn't because as he brought his leg to a certain point, her weight bore down right here on that rigid tree, caused pain, and he dropped his foot right there. And when uh, Ricky, to very much to her credit, saw what was happening, and I wasn't intending to demonstrate soreness. I was intending to show her that her horse had a standard or center, a rather typical A or rafter shaped back. Um, and as we were doing that, he was demonstrating soreness. And she knew right away that she had a saddle problem and needed to do something about it and volunteered to come help with this video so some of you folks could see some of the things to look out for. Because we all make, all of us, make these kinds of mistakes when fitting our horses. Um, it's just when we recognize there's a problem, when we know our horse is having a problem, it's what we do about it, how far we're willing to go to make our horses comfortable that really counts in the long run. This is the bit that Ricky's been using on Tonto. Um, it's really not a bad bit, as you see. It's got, it's got the ability to be worked side to side. It's got independent action. There's no breakdown in the, very little breakdown, not enough for any pinching in the mouthpiece. Um, it's got some tongue relief, not as much as I'd like to see, but enough that when you put this in the horse's mouth, there's some room for the tongue. Uh, the primary problem with this bit is that it has a square port in the center. Horses' are, mouths are not built square. They don't have square palates. They generally have a rounded palate. So the corner's going to come up here and, and hit somewhat. That's really not a big problem. The biggest problem with this bit is related to this particular horse is that he tends to be trotty or diagonally oriented. This is going to cause him to overflex when the port comes up and hits him in the palate. He's going to somewhat overflex and stiffen, and that's going to increase the, the chances that he's going to trot rather than come back into a nice, smooth uh, rack or running walk. Now, here's something that I'd like to stress when you're checking your horse's saddle fit. You want to take your hand with the rider up down behind the narrow, underneath the narrow part of the pommel. That would be under the saddle pad. And basically, you want your horse to take a couple of steps. You want to see if that scapula, when it rotates back, is hitting the front edge of the saddle bar if you do this, you can let your hand or a friend's hand take the pressure that the horse's shoulder is usually taking. Now, I can't get my hand in there, and his, hand, and his shoulder absolutely cannot. Go ahead and walk him a step or two forward. His shoulder comes right back and hits the front edge of the saddle bar on this saddle. That's a really important consideration. The other thing that you want to do with a rider up, 
and we're, we don't have to do it with this horse because we've already showed how so sore he is in the loins. But from time to time, the, the soreness that's in the horse's uh, loin area or, or the seat area where the, underneath where the rider sits, that soreness from time to time is not evident until the rider is up. They've put enough pressure on that part of the back that just a little bit more will demonstrate the soreness that's in there. Whereas if you just do a surface test without a saddle up or without a rider on, you're not going to see the soreness that you're going to see if you test with just easy with a flat of your hand right under where the rider's weight falls. And like I said, we could do that here with Tonto, but we've already heard him enough today, I think. Now we're going to have him ride off so that you can see the short stridedness and back that we were talking about, how he responds to the pressure in his back when he goes to ride or stride up underneath himself. He says, I'm going to follow you. <laughs> now, as, as Ricky increases the speed and it requires more agility through the back, Tanto becomes very inconsistent behind his back legs will very inconsistently, and he drops that hind leg sooner than he should, particularly on the left-hand side. He tends to go to pace because a horse that's not comfortable in their saddle will tend to go to another gate rather than the one that they're uh, bred and conformed to do. Generally, it'll be a two-beat gate. It'll be pace or trot or perhaps a stepping pace. Now the, what you see is a little bit of bandy legged where his hock twists to the outside. See how he shortens his stride when she asks for more? Now that would be okay if Tonto were naturally a racking horse, but Tonto's built to do a nice running walk. And before we're done, that's exactly what he's going to be doing. Here we have uh, Ricky and Tonto. And you'll recall earlier, Tanto was the spotted mountain horse that had the sore back that was so obviously flinching when we touched him along his back. Uh, he also tended to short stride behind when she walked him in gait because um, when he came up and his leg hit a certain point of the stride, there was soreness in his back as that action transferred through, through. And so he just dropped his foot right there rather than continuing on and striding. So now we've refit him uh, in a different saddle, a uh, different pad, different bit, and we're going to have uh, Ricky work him to lengthen his stride and show what this horse can do when we work the walk, get him going with good impulsion, uh, and get him comfortable and flowing and reaching underneath himself the way that he nature intended that he should do. Walk him on, Ricky. Let's see, walk him right on. He's obviously very comfortable in his new bit, dropped right onto it. You'll notice now, even at the walk, that he has a nice long stride behind. He's not short stepping. We're going to ask Ricky to pick up the speed of that walk just a little bit, not too much. It, there'll probably be some back and forth until he understands about transitioning. That's good. Walk him on. You see, oh, he's getting a nice little head nod because his stride behind is lengthening. Walk him on, walk him on, work that walk. A little less on the rein, just a little. He's tending to overflex on it. That's better, that's better. I want you to walk him on quite vigorously, but not as much, quite as much on the rein. That's good. That's good. Nice walk. A little more. Be real persistent. Remember the ask, ask, insist. You need to ask, ask harder, and then insist. And then insist, 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 because when you want more speed, you want more speed. That's it. That's it. That's better. He's actually getting used to being able to stride underneath himself. There's no short striding whatsoever. He's falling right on through. Oh, pretty little run walk. How's that feel, Ricky? Go ahead. 
Just keep on working that walk. You want to slow him down. He's starting a little pacey. You feel when he stiffened up there, Ricky? Could you feel that? When, when that happens, I want you to check him back in the bridle while you push him forward because you push him forward to let him know, I don't want you to stop or slow down, but you check him. I want you to quit that pace because what he's doing is, uh, is uh, shortchanging you. He's cheating you. He's saying, I don't want to do the work that this... Uh, uh, four beat gait requires. I want to stiffen up and just shuffle my legs underneath me in a nice easy little stepping pace. And what he doesn't know is that mom knows that's not good for him. So even though it's the hard thing to do, at, especially at first, it's the best thing for him in the long run. So um, when you see him over tucking, give him a little more rein. And when he starts to go um, with his head up and a little stiff, push him forward, but check him, okay? Work that walk. That's what we're basically doing, working that walk. And I'll tell you, they do get a little resistant, at first, especially at first. Work them, work them, work them, work them, work them. Walk them, walk them, walk them. Let's go. Let's go. He's over flexing. Give him a little more. Go ahead and take him in some nice leading rein circles, Ricky. Get him to soften up and, and stretch out to the bit. Take him in some leading rein circles, nice big leading rein circles, because we want him to stretch out and ask for the bit. He's starting to, he's trying to cheat you by going behind it, and then he's trying to cheat you by doing a little step pace. The more he has to work, the more he says, well, maybe there's a shortcut out of this. That's good. Now the other side. <laughs> 